You've seen how layouts work, so you know how to design chapters, sections, and pages. The other side of the design coin in iBooks author is the paragraph, character, and list styles section. So to get to that, you've got to create some space on one side of your window. And then you go to View and Show Styles Drawer. And I made a lot of space because I'm going to make this really wide so that we can actually read everything. So we've got paragraph styles, character styles, and list styles. And they're fairly self-explanatory. There's a little bit of conceptual overlap between paragraph and character styles. And really, mostly, what you'll be doing is making and manipulating paragraph styles. So I'm going to hit these two little uh, buttons in the lower right to hide the list styles and character styles. And if you want to bring them back, you just click them again. But I'm going to hide them for now. And so what we see here is pretty much, you know, a, a overview of what you use paragraph styles for. Body text, chapter titles, footnotes, headings. There's a lot of them here, uh, but those are probably the basic ones that you'll need at minimum, maybe four or five at minimum. Uh, every template that Apple ships with iBooks Author has a bunch of these paragraph styles. And I made a bunch more for my own template, and that's why there's so many here. But you can delete them, and you can change what they look like. So you don't actually need to have this many. But anyway, let's get going. So if we go into any old chapter here, and we click on some text, we see that body is highlighted in blue, and there's a little black triangle that appears. And so that means that this text is body text that it's been defined as body text. If it's not defined as anything, it'll highlight free form up here. And if we click on that triangle, we see a few options, most of which are grayed out right now. And so you can rename the style, delete the style, create paragraph style from selection, which I'll show you more of in a moment. Now if I select this text up here, it also highlights the body style, but our triangle is turned red. And basically what that means is that there's some difference between this and our regular body style. And of course the difference is pretty obvious. It's bold. The regular body style is not bold and this heading is bold. And in fact, heading. Speaking of the fact that it's a heading, why don't we just define it as a heading? So probably what I want to do is have that not be body at all. I'll select it. I'll go down and to redefine it I just click heading 2 and now I've just made that into a heading. I can do that to another one and do that to another one and keep going and I'm going to make all these things that look like you know what we think of as headings into actually headings and not the body. Well I'm sure there's more but I'll stop with this for now. But let's say that after having designed this chapter, or even after having designed the whole book, we change our mind at the last minute and think, oh wait, I don't like the way that I made those headings. I want them to be bright red and not italics. What do you do? Well, since we had the foresight to define them all as headings, I only have to change them once. I only have to change one of them. So I'm going to grab this heading, but it could be any old heading. It doesn't have to be the first one. It could be any, any heading to select it, make the change I want. So I'm going to change it. I said I didn't want italic. I just want bold. And I want to make it red, we decided. So now, see our, red, our triangle has turned red because we've changed it from the normal heading to. So if I click the red triangle, then what I want to do is redefine style from selection. So that's going to change everything that's heading to to look like this. And indeed, it changed it here, and it changed all three of those, and it changed all the ones I've, I've made into heading two. And if I had made things in other chapters into heading two, it would change those as well. So this will take place across your entire book. So this is an invaluable tool to give yourself that flexibility to make changes later just by defining things in a logical way. It's the same concept behind uh, cascading style sheets on web pages. 
Basically, you define something as a heading once, and then you can always change what it looks like later. It's extremely convenient. But let's say we want to make a new style. Let's say, let's say just these names here, Achilles, Moses, Isis, Charles. Let's say we want all names for whatever reason. We want them to be really big and, and green. And what's, what's a funny font? Marker felt. That looks kind of weird. We want them to be in marker felt, like super cheesy. And maybe what other options are wide marker felt. And uh, yeah, and maybe underlined. No, this is good enough. All right, so we want all names to look like that. But there is no, there's no style that really matches what we're doing. So then what we're going to do is we right click on that and we select create paragraph style from selection and click it and then we can give it a name and we're gonna call it weird looking names and now we've got this style weird looking names and it's even alphabetically arranged just where it should be at the very end of that list and now I can change anything that's a name and I just go through and find weird looking names in the paragraph style drawer and apply it Oops, I did the whole, oh, that will do that, won't it? So that's, uh, that's good to notice that, that it's, since it's a paragraph style and not a character style, it's going to apply it to the entire paragraph and not just one word. I had forgotten that, but it's obvious now that it's doing the entire, um, the entire paragraph in a certain, a certain style. But anyway, no matter, um, let's say we want to change the style after the fact. So we don't like how big it is. So we just want to make it maybe not that small, maybe 18 and a lighter shade of green. And then again, we go to the red triangle and redefine style from selection. And then we say, oh, no, wait, we screwed up. We don't like that style after all should be able to revert that. No, we can't revert it. Well, I think we can revert this one. Revert to define style. So, you know, there's a few odd glitches there. You saw that, you know, Charles was somehow selected separately from the line, although the others we had to select the entire line. Um, there's just a few kind of unusual artifacts that you might encounter. But overall, the utility of paragraph styles is enormous. And basically that and layouts is how you design a template for your book. Like that is what a template really is. Everything else is just kind of your content or a little bit of window dressing. But the core of making a template, of designing a book template, is setting up your paragraph styles and setting up those layouts that we already saw with chapters, sections, and pages. And that's what you do. That's how it works.